Oh, we're live apparently. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're live apparently. Sorry. Someone told me we weren't live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome to Vanilla <laughs> TV. Uh, I'm just making sure that we are live. Yep, we are live. Sorry, I was just making sure on the video. That's really bad of me. I apologize. Welcome to Vanilla TV. My God, you can tell I am rusty. We've got a show match for you tonight, but let me just introduce you. In the streaming corner, it is the great Bone from Boneyard's production. My partner for tonight is the magical Calcula Hayden. I am Scully, we have ETF 2L versus UGC, the admin strike again. Hi Hayden, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good, I didn't realise we were alive, and then we were, and then there were like some Ubers that happened, and the century went down, and it's good, it's gonna be a good night. We are live, let me just get this right, I mean, for the moment we can see that in the red team is ETF 2L with names that I can't actually tell, in the blue team is UGC. Uh, this is going to be uh, upward first, which I did not know it was going to be upward first, but that's okay. But uh, basically, it's going to be the PL mats first. I don't think it's going to be a cough mat, so we're just going to let you know straight away. It's uh, if you ever play Gravel Pit, or you know your Highlander format with payload. It's like that basically. They're going to set a time first UGC, and we can see that they're looking at really good time at the moment. We apologize for the late start here, so Gully first. Yep, yeah, apparently it's Gully first, but I don't know why they changed. Sorry about that, Hayden. Um, what do you know about this? It's been a while since I played Highlander. Um, it's much more complicated to both cast and to play than uh, Sixes because, I mean, Sixes is 12 people, Highlander there's 18, it's like there's another team on and uh, there's more classes to cover, There's more cl each class has a different role and uh, it is a lot more work and there's a lot more going on, but it is very action packed, it can be a bit slow at times, but it is very much so action packed and it is very interesting to see what each class is doing at exact times. Yeah, I'm just having a look here. I'm just trying to see who the. I'm, I'm really confused that they've got different names. I actually, I actually thought they'd be on their normal names. It's just kind of quite hilarious when you realise that it's ETF 2L enforcing name. But I am pretty sure it is ETF 2L on the Reds. Uh, someone will correct me on this. Uh, actually, no, because I'm on the wrong relay apparently. Yeah, I thought so. I, I was checking the guy that's in it. They're on Gully Wash right now. They're on Gully Wash. Wow. Well, what game are we watching? <laughs> what game are we? I am really <laughs> sorry about this, people. I have no idea what's happened, and I apologize. I feel like the biggest idiot in the world. <laughs> what game are we watching? How, how did you end up here? I don't know. I've got to fuck up a game one. Try that one. There we go. Right. Wow! Hi guys! We are Vanilla <laughs> TV! This is our production value! We are the best in the world! <laughs> okay! While you find the Battle Game Relay, I am going to see exactly what's just happened because at the moment ECF2O are in the lead, they have taken the middle point on this and it is so weird to see a CP map, be a 5 CP map, being played in Highlander. Oh my god! Right, are you, okay, can you, have you found that? I don't have the STV. What? Uh, I'll try and get the STV one second in. Uh, there we go. I have no idea. The, the, the no TV relay I was given was not correct for some reason. That where I typed it in. As we know right now, UGC do have the middle point back again. The advantages we are looking at. Oh, that's some great headshots and great spies there. There's some great cavalry the headshot there. Permzilla with the spy there. A lot of people ask you why are they playing those positions? Well, Permzilla's backing up there. It was a couple of nice plays. They don't have the advantage at the moment. They have uh, equal Ubers at the moment. What is Spike going to do with this is the question right now. Are they going to be able to push with this? He's just going to be waiting for the building there. It's going to be interesting to see a, a Spike CP map because of the uh, because of the fact that it's Highlander. Because now you've got a Pyro constantly blocking the choke point. Go. You've got a Sniper holding it. You've got to make sure you've got the Engineer. Now, it's either safe and smart Engineers. They're going to be running the Gunslinger, which will give them the Mini Sentry, which I do see there. So, really, it's just going to be a lot more there. Campo's getting some free roam on the outside as well. Getting a couple kills. Gus did take it down, but a two kills down on the five. Pumps, they'll get the backstab. That's just what they need. The Ubers are almost equal. Spike's almost got it right now. Maybe a dot push. I'm not exact, entirely sure. They want to go for the dot push right now. Here they go. Are you win, Hayden? Uh, yeah, I am. And we're going to be seeing Sad 
Min or Kalut, I really don't know who it is, but we do see the ETF 12 team going to be looking to push through Choke. But as you said, Highlander, and without that, uh, that normal 60s style that we're used to, we are going to be actually seeing the Pyro being able to have last ETF 12 back out a little bit, but it doesn't stop them too much. They do actually take down almost everybody, just Roman Anderson and Mia left alive for UGC right now, and that's going to allow ETF 12 to start walking in. We're going to be seeing Cal 2. Uh, and the sniper and the medic going to be roaming straight through Big Dog. Going to be able to grab second for free right now. And then they're going to be able to look and pushing through onto last very soon. Especially with the massive uber advantage that they do hold within their hands. Yeah, that is a huge advantage. That's at about 40% uh, advantage there. Really good. But look how aggressive you see with the play. He's not those stickies right there. Oh, who's that heavy? That's uh, that's cold there. Not realize the heavy. He does pick uh, the stickies. He does pick it up straight away. They're in a great position right now. I'm just going to see what Campo's doing there. Just looking up for the shop there. Not sure he's going to get anything. That's the thing with Highlander. It is all action everywhere. So this is why I'm not exactly a fan of it on the 5, on the 5 CP map. But they are managing to do this. Uh, Hudge, we'll try and fix that as soon oh, as we can. Oh! Mia going in for the medic drop. And she'd have got it if she swung her knife just like half a second earlier. With that original result in a failed stab. And Mia going to be going down. Roman Anderson also down for UGC. But Canfo does go down. Uh, for ETF 12, but there are quite a few players for UGC actually going to be dropping right now, and that is going to really delay any kind of push, uh, or actually speed up any kind of push that ETF 12 want to make, and kind of slow down any defense that UGC are trying to do. We do actually see the Pyro on the point being able to air blast a lot and a lot of stickies, just a lot of spam on that point, trying to allow the ETF 12 team to walk onto it and to try to destroy the UGC team. We do actually see ETF 12 roaming up behind the point, and that's going to be the first round to ETF 12. Yeah, it was the, it was the py Pyro going under that really got them there. Got a couple kills, managed to get in. And then, of course, the old classic everyone clump onto the points strategy, which meant Sonny Black using Sonny Black. <laughs> I'm going to be pro ETF 12 on this, I'm sorry. Sonny Black picking up some stickies there. Fantastic for that. It's going to be 1 0, and I believe it is uh, ETF 12 rule, so it's going to be best of 5. i got to check that. But anyway, here comes the second mid straight away. Sonny Black goes down right away. Uh, yeah, we are going to be seeing a lot of uh, a lot going on. Actually, we're going to see Kumari being able to take down Black Bob from Big Door right there. We're going to actually see Johnny Bamba uh, taking down somebody and Permzilla taking down Inf. Uh, and there's just a lot of damage and a lot of kills being exchanged right now. We do actually see UGC looking to run uh, towards ETF 12's Big Door, Red's Big Door right now, but they are taking a little bit of spam and the numbers are around equal. There is about a one-player advantage though. For ETF 12, but I don't think it'll really matter too much as UGC really aren't being able to do much anyway. Hein being taken down by Kalt uh, Minigun right there, and just a lot of players going down for UGC in general. And with that medic um, spike being able to stay alive for ETF, ETF 12, it is going to be a little bit of an advantage for them. Yeah, Heine got caught out of position, which was really bad there with the Pyro's. All he had was waiting maybe for an Uber, couldn't get anything, and oh, Kaltu takes down him. And decides while Uber that he will taunt with the heavy weapons guy. That's a bit of showboat there. <laughs> That's what it's all about here is the admins trying to catch on what they want. Admins trying to beat the admins here. They are going to take this for free. And it's another time where they managed to take mid and then roll on to second for practically little. Yes, they popped the Uber, but they only took a couple kills and managed to just keep going with it. So... They're in great position there. There goes a crit from the Frontier Justice. Man, it's great to see Highlander with all these unlocks. Takes a crit with the Frontier Justice there. And I'm just trying to see where is the spy there because it was, it's going to come down onto the spy. I'm not sure which where Maya is. She's behind using, running the Spicicle. Not going to catch anything. She's out of position right now. So I believe that ETF 12 well will be able to go on this when they've got Uber. They're just going to recharge, reset, and there goes in straight away. Mia gets taken down. They're in great position right now. Yeah, I mean, as you said, with the unlocks, the kind of different playstyle that we're not used to on Gully Wash. On Gully Wash, we're used to the standard sixes format, but this is Highlander. There's three extra players on each team, and it really does just kind of broaden this up and make Gully Wash kind of a very different map than what we're used to seeing. And I really do enjoy watching Highlander uh, Gully Wash just because it's so different to what we're used to, and that's what makes it brilliant. Now, we do actually see ETF 12 trying to poke down Riverside, trying to do a little bit of damage, but I don't think it's going to be really too much right now. We do actually see the Uber coming in underneath. Um, from UGC, uh, or UTF 2 l sorry, but the UGC Uber was also popped as well. I don't really know where that actually got to. We do see uh, Kaleshi, or Kaleshi, trying to do a little bit of work on the point, but it really just wasn't enough, and ETF 12 did manage to grab that one with ease. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's quite interesting. The first time they uh, they went for a pyro under, it worked. This time a heavy under, it worked. This is Vanilla TV giving you the Highlander show match between UGC admins and ETSO admins. If you want to go to our second stream at the moment, we have the ESA Open Cup final with uh, with Bite and Pledge of Ari on the stream. That's uh, Epsilon versus Broder. That's going to be a fun game as well. But right now it's 2-0 to the ETSO admins and they're looking to get some more advantage as they go into this third round. Yeah, we're going to be seeing Mia trying to go for the backstab onto uh, Kalt there, but it just wasn't enough Kalt being able to spot her out. But as you can see, just by kind of the players that are going down, just a lot of players are down for UGC. Inf just going down, Kumari went down pretty quickly along with Roman Anderson and a bunch of other players for UGC. And it's really just kind of slowing any kind of offense that they want to start at mid. And with just three players alive now, and Cole being pressured on by the scout, which I think the scout is going to have to be forced out of there right now, so very nicely done. Lyra not being able to get much done, and Cole just sat with two HP behind second, uh, he does actually get taken down from long distance by Sunny Black, and I mean, ETF2 are just really showing, I mean, sure they have the ping advantage, but it, you can just kind of see how well they're doing, and how their positioning and their DM is really paying off, and you can really see that right now, we're going to be seeing ETF2 are going to be able to grab this second point, and with the 80% advantage, they're going to be able to walk onto last. Yeah, I mean, you look at it with the players as well. I mean, they've got a lot more experience on, the, on in these type of events. Uh, you know, a lot more experience as well with league play. Some high-level players there. You look at Pumzilla, one of the best high-level players in England. Uh, you've got Spike, who's always a veteran. Black Bob. Kampha, we don't talk much about Kampha because I'll let you in on a little story as we're going in for this, before we're going for this push. I actually played a, an, an official 6v6 against him once. He ended up on this map with zero points after we 5 0 his team. <laughs> so as we kind of go into this point right now, the Uber's co-op is not prevailed, but they are getting enough kills to do a lot of damage. They have got what they have that's enough. They are able to just force them in. There's a few plays there, and then when the Uber comes in, some of them's just running around. So it is American rule set, so it's going to be 3-0 going into the half. So they're going to go to the half, switch sides now. That is the UGC rules, and we may be looking forward. This could be a 5 nil very quickly. Yeah, I'm going to 5-0. I mean, ETF, well, I, you know, they do have the ping advantage, and I'll give them that. You know, it is just a little bit unfair, which on the next map we're going to be, I think they're going to be switching servers, so they're going to be on an American server, so the UGC admins will have a bit of a better ping advantage, and ETF, well, will have to be a little bit lower in that regard. But I feel like ETF, well, not only do they have the ping advantage, which is just a straight upgrade to being able to do better than the other team, but they also know what they're doing a lot more. And I, not in, like, the offensive way, just kind of, they know when they need to push, they know where they need to be on mid. When they were pushing onto last, they know where to send their players. Like, we saw the heavy uh, heavy from behind, then the pyro from behind, and just knowing where they need to send their classes is really working out for them, and I think that's really what they need to keep uh, up, I guess, to be able to keep going. And the server just changed for you. Yeah, they're reloading map to yeah. fix the logs. Okay, fair enough. So, well, we got a small moment there uh, on our Facebook page, and uh, also, which is uh, facebook.com forward slash vanilla TV. And uh, our website, VanillaTF2.org. Uh, did I say that right? Yes, Vanilla TV. Yeah. Basically, <laughs> there is a nice little poster there that was made up for us with all the team and the players right there. Light Tree for ECF2. I'll go with that. Light Tree on the Scout. Sonny Black on the Soldier. Black Bog on the Pyro. And Trorum playing the Sticky Man, I believe. That's been the change. Katu was meant to be Heavy Weapons Guy. Johnny Bambo was meant to be Engineer. Spike himself was the, was the Medic. Kampha was the Sniper. And Pumzilla was the Spy. I believe the only change there is in Torum for Sonny Black. Uh, can't remember the top of my head. UGC is different. They've got people that can sub in. So it's either going to be Gregsor or Blazing Boy as the scout. Either Roman or Verdugo as soldier. Kalesi, which we just saw, or Zalo as the pyro. Cold or Ubiticus. I apologize if I don't say that right. As the sticky uh, launcher man. Imp, as we saw... And the heavy could be Stella Hopper if they sub out. Helen Angel or Firefly playing the engineer. Henry as we saw, or maybe Roman as the medic. Kimori as a sniper. And Gregor, maybe, but as we know at the moment, our lovely casting partner, Mia, as the spy. So UGC, they don't really have big names that are known in the community, but they do have some Highlander players there. So it's not it's not the fact that they're in, they're going to be struggling. It, they're just going to be outplayed. 
Yeah, I mean, it, we we also see like some of the ETF twelve people. I know Lyra is a big Highlander player, and uh, just a lot of the ETF twelve people they're experienced in um, Highlander, you know. And, and I mean, sure, some of the UGC people may be experienced as well, but it just kind of seems like ETF twelve know what they're doing a lot more. If that makes sense, really, it's not like UGC are bad. It's just that ETF twelve seem to be knowing what they're doing, and uh, they're going to be able to step it up just uh, one step higher than UGC, I guess. Yeah, I mean, we did talk about it as well when you look at the players they've got as well. I mean, Pumzilla, we just put that off. I did say he was one of the best, um, the best demo, uh, the best, one of the best Highlander players in in England. Uh, and probably Europe, really, when you think about it, in one of the top teams. Uh, you know, so he's going to be playing in the Nations Cup as well. Some of these players will be playing in the Nations Cup, which we have been casting as well. A couple games as well. Uh, so these guys do have the experience and the practice, but... When it's also American rule set, it's also weird as well because it does throw you off a little bit because in a Highlander, I always feel that a CP map can go one way or another. It's never balanced because it's always a fast game because of the fact that it's 9v9. So just put a, just put a little speed bump in the middle there with the half time. It just means that ETF will only need two more and uh, UGC, they have to go for a whole five. <laughs> They've got an uphill battle. <laughs> um, I don't know. I still don't like five CP maps in Highlander. I don't see the. Uh, I don't see why people like it. I mean, you're a Highlander player more than I am. I mean, probably you can explain where where there is the entertainment in the five CP maps of Highlander because I just find it weird. There isn't for me. Like as an engineer on this map, because I'm I'm an engineer, so I can't really say too much for it, but. As an engineer, moving those teleports around is the single most painful thing in existence, but it is kind of enjoyable. It's similar to Sixes to an extent. Uh, like, of course, it's not exactly like the way it would be played in Sixes, but if you play it in Highlander and you play it as 5 CP map, if you get up that momentum and if you get really nice, a balanced game, 5 CP can probably be more entertaining than King of the Hill or Pillar, just because it's kind of different. It's There's nine classes all doing their own thing, and there's five control points to do it in. And it's a lot more, it's a lot lengthened out, I guess. I find it enjoyable um, when, like, we're playing a balanced team and when just the teams both have momentum and everything's going really smoothly and it's just a good game in general. And that's kind of when 5CP is good. But if it's a very one-sided game for 5CP, it becomes very much less enjoyable. Yeah, I, I, I just find that it just doesn't fit the mentality because a lot of us are used to the 66 style, which I feel is, especially being European, it's a slow style. It's it's more waiting and building and pushing, and there's there's little of that. It's usually push, push, push. Um, the advantages as well, it's kind of hard because if you take two down, it's seven versus nine. It's still not a big enough advantage. You take three down, it's it's nine versus six. Still not big enough. It's like when do you know you've got a big enough advantage to go into push? You know you've got to remember who's up as well because you know you've got one of every class. So it's not like they okay, went live, guys, by the way. They are live as well. While we were talking about that, I do apologise. <laughs> I, I was on a lovely spill there, but we're going to go through this straight away as we know ETF2 are now on the blue. They are taking a slow approach here at the moment. Soldier's got nothing up, but they have got the high ground before UGC get up there. And I believe it's while Sentry Gun just playing at hiding so there's nothing else. Campbell gets taken down straight away. That's a sniper battle gun straight away. There goes some more sniper rifle. They're Bambo and there goes Black Bob as well. They don't have the nut. It's going to be equal right now. Six versus six. The Uber's going to go straight to Henry first. He's going to hold on for that as much as he can. He has decided to go for it. Is it because? I yes, because it's a quick fix, isn't it? Spy finally gets it. Pumzilla couldn't get him. It was face stabbing. I did not see that. It was a quick fix. That was pretty fast. Then comes the Uber. With the heavy weapons go straight away. Heavy weapons guy versus heavy weapons guy and a pyro. I I think the pirate may be the deciding factor here. It is indeed. Spike does go down. UGC does have the midpoint. Yes, they do. Some great play there. And I did not see that quick fix pick up. And one of the things you rarely see. Yeah, especially with that new update, we're just kind of buffing the quick fix, making it kind of viable. A lot of teams have been kind of exper experimenting with that. But Camfo does take down Kumari there. And I believe we actually saw... You know, it was just uh, one of the escape plan crates. Again, another thing, uh, escape plan kind of a bit less used, kind of. Uh, you kind of have to be more uh, safe with it, uh, because you will be taking mini crates if you do have it out and somebody does attack you with it. But it does look like UGC are going to be looking to hold pretty far forward near Choke. Uh, we do see Cold just trying to spam through. Engineer just going to be walking in right now, actually pressuring down Cold. Uh, Johnny Bamba almost taking down Cold, and it is just kind of going to be a bit, a little bit of a stalemate. Because as you were saying earlier, it is kind of all about aggression, but when you don't have any kind 
kind of advantage to push on and use aggression with, it can get a, bit, a little bit stalemated. So we do actually see Quintosh and Johnny Bambo going down. Johnny Bambo only just respawning. Gregor did actually go down, and it's going to be a little while until he's back up. Kumari also goes down as well, and uh, Mia taking down Kanfo. So just a few players being exchanged right now. We're just going to be waiting for some sort of advantage or some sort of Uber. Uh, Heine does actually have the Uber, and the Uber from Spike is going to be ready just about now. Yeah, they had no choice to go in for it. And there goes Punk's gonna take it down Cal AC. That's all he could get before he got taken down. But the Uber was popped so early, and now comes a Pyro Uber by ETF to well. They do take down just a sentry gun, and usually see really smart just to back off when they can. But Sonny Black now gets a couple kills there. He takes down a couple. The soldier's also down. But there goes Katu. What can they do without their heavy weapons guy? Well, they can make imp on fire, but there's nothing he can do. So it's going to be another reset, and they're just going to wait right now. And the key's going to be great headshot. And the key's going to be when are they a who's going to Uber first? Who's going to flinch first? Because we saw the UGC really Ubered early, in my opinion. They Ubered way too early before the heavy was even spinning up. Probably didn't get a good read on where they were. Maybe if they get this right this time, the Ubers may be a little bit equal. Yeah, they're equal. In fact, yeah, they're, they're equal. Let's just see what's going to happen because I feel it could be. Well, I'm just going to see. Maybe ETS well could splinch it. I'm not sure. Yeah, we are going to be seeing Badman Permzil going to be sat back using that cloak and dagger. Uh, the spy, right now he, the spy can't really do much. There isn't much room for him to do. The pyro's constantly going to be spy checking near the medic. There's no important picks that they can get. But Badman Permzil is going to be able to use that cloak and dagger to sit back and to be able to analyze and look at what's around. He's going to be trying to go for the sniper, being able to take down Kumari. Uh, Kalt is going to be able to take down Cold. And some players are going down for UGC. Four players down for UGC. And that is going to allow a big, or five now, and that is going to allow uh, the push coming in from ETF to and that's going to allow them to go so deep into this point that they are going to be able to uh, just kind of push this uh, or I thought they were going to be able to I completely mixed up my teams right there UGC lost a lot of players oh he was healing oh, was <laughs> that was the, the Mia was being healed death by the medic that's a big mistake, but I'm surprised UGC didn't capitalize on that I was just also looking at our split vision as well done by Bones a really nice split vision that's going on for this game it's a really interesting place as well when you think about that UGC had a huge uber advantage and couldn't capitalize because of the high ground. So that's not what they were after there. Not exactly the best way could, but maybe because of the lateness and how slow it took them. UGC, maybe it's a defender. You can see this en en engineer throwing his life away. We're going to come down a black rock with the pyro there. He is focusing down the heavy. He's not taking him down yet, but can the heavy get take taken down? No, it's a drop as well. Spike had the uber and just lost it. This middle point does get captured finally, but ETF 2L lost a lot of personnel on this. Yeah, we're going to be seeing just too many players down for UGC for anything to come out of it, but so is ETF 2L. ETF 2L did actually manage to grab that midpoint though, which is going to give them those forward spawns. Massive respawn wave coming in for them, and it's just Lyra down right now, and they are going to be easily starting to build that Uber again, using that stock medigum. Uh, as well as I do believe UGC are as well. So it is going to be equal Ubers right now. And we're just going to be waiting to see what happens. So we're going to be seeing ETF12 rotating up round through into choke. Or looking to push through choke. Or just hold near it. And we do actually see uh, Heine going down from Sunny Black. Just a lot of overextending coming in from UGC right now. Gregor going down. Roman Anderson only just respawning. Helen Angel is actually down as well. And just UGC is just walking into ETF12 ETF when they don't need to. And that's going to allow them to walk onto second point right now. And keep this uber to be able to do more uh, we're gonna see Sunny black taking down in thought and ugc players are just dying all over the place plus also you've got me mia behind in a really bad position there so that's gonna mean they're gonna be playing nine versus eight as well because she's out of position now she's finally appeared she's come to the party is it too late though because she's right on the point right now it's gonna get pissed on with the gerati does get taken down and that's that as well Hey, Heine does get an Uber Sword. That's going to help them. But the Ubers come off straight away by ETF to well. It's just a Pyro, and you think, what's a Pyro going to do? Point. Well, there goes the Soldier. Just a lot of damage there. Quintosh and Blackfrog does all the work there. Really great work there. It's going to be 4 0 then because of, because of the hard time advantage. And ETF to well just need one more to uh, take it. Don't forget to listen to TV. We are casting the ESA Open Cup. Final on our second stream, Vanilla TV 2. Pledge Fight and Ari do have that. Epsilon versus Broda. Not sure what the score is. When we get the score, we'll let you update it. But if you want to watch that, Vanilla TV 2. Anyway, Hayden, this is the fifth round, the second round of the half. Take us away.
Yeah, we're going to be seeing UGC going up very aggressive right now. Going through the aggressive. Just going to be walking up into Choke. Cole does get taken down by Quintosh very quickly. Quintosh taking down Kumari, the sniper as well. But the Spy's going to be trying to come up behind, but nothing's going to be able to come out of that. And that aggressive push right there from UGC really just pressured a lot of ETF-12 back through Choke, but they didn't get many picks, and that's going to be their problem right now. Heine's just stood around, not having anybody to, he anybody to heal, and not really being too safe. He does get headshot, though, by Permzilla, the Spy. Very nice ambassador player right there. And uh, with that 100% Uber from ETF-12, it's going to be a little bit of time until we wait, uh, until anything can really come out of UGC right now. It is going to be a, a lot of players down for UGC, and all just going to be respawning, so we're going to be, see uh, be seeing ETF-12. Going to be looking to push, but Madmin Spike himself drops to Kumari. Uh, that's 100% stock Medigun drop, and that's going to really delay ETF-12. Oh, man. Spike! I thought you stopped that. <laughs> I actually thought Spike stopped dropping. Oh man, I am I am disappointed that Spike dropped there. Not helpful for them anyway. Uh, as it's going to be, it is going to hinder them. Sorry, I'm, I'm looking at the stream and I'm looking at the chat at the same time. Sorry about that. It is going to hinder them, but it's not going to hinder them enough. What can UGC do? They can't really push out on this. They would need a big break to push out on this. And I think they still have to run with the medic gun, so there's not much they can do. Mia is behind though, cloaked up. Uh, where is she going to be doing? As they're going in for the point anyway, just trying to get some time on it, does get thrown away. One scout's dead, does take down, that's Lightry, takes down Helen Angel. They have to put some more people back as well. Got to stand on to the point, he is just going to be stopped as well, but that point is heavily capped. Maybe an opportunity for ETF to go away, ETF to, to go into this. Heine does have the Uber almost ready though, so I don't think they can go in on this. ETF to well do have to hold on for this. Campo gets taken down and there goes Kalatu as well. Sniper is getting he focused so heavily by Mia, it's just, it's quite interesting to see how easily Campo's getting backstabbed all the time. But what can you do? You can't, you know, you can't defend one person at all times unless it's the medic, so maybe that's what they're waiting for. Lightry goes down, Ubers are equal, just gonna be waiting on the first person to make a move. Yeah, we're just going to be seeing ETF-12. They do have that 100% Uber, and UGC is going to be able to grab that as well. And with that one-player advantage, it does look like UGC are going to be having uh, to be forced out of the Uber with ETF-12 just bombing in. They don't care about any player advantages. They're just going to be going in, and they're going to try to do a little bit of work. But it does seem like UGC are going to be able to come out on top right now. Heine and the Heavy and the Sniper are going to be able to stand on the point. Heine taking a lot of damage. It does get taken down, though, uh, by... Uh, I don't actually know who took him down. But we're going to be seeing Mia uncloaking down Riverside. Going to be trying to do a little bit of work. Going to be having to rotate back down underneath just to be able to make sure that nobody's going to be coming out of here. ETF-12, kind of a failed Kamori. push right there. Kamori <laughs> just went huge with like three, three melee kills followed up by a headshot on Campho. Give that man a medal, that was amazing. It's a great defense there. I'm not exactly sure what happened to it resulted in a melee fight. He may be out of ammo, but it does give him enough momentum. But again, they can't push out from it because of the numbers advantage. And now, surely, this is the time for Crits Creek. I know that it's 9v9, but Spikes decide not to go Crits Creek. Heinies decide not to go Crits Creek. So it's going to be a standard reset, recycle, 9 versus 9. And Komori goes down to a, <laughs> it's a spy headshot as well. I'm loving that the spies are using the ambassador. It's, some, it's great. It's just what, one thing I love about Highlander. It's the open place there. ETF2 out just rushing in here, taking some plays there, but UGC gets a couple now. Now this could be the opportunity they need. It's four versus four. They do have a level two sentry. That's going to do a lot of damage, actually. Level two sentry on the point. They wanted to push out. They could, but they've decided to go down. against it. it gets taken down by Sonic Black. They do take down Sonic Black, though. What is anybody... Well, sorry. What is that sniper going to do? What's Campo going to do? Nothing. So, we're just waiting for the one play at the moment. I think, you should, I think ETS World just rushing this a little bit. Yeah, I mean, they are just kind of... They, they kind of can, though. UGC really can't push out right now, and they are going to be able to con... Uh, they are... Look well, ETF-12 going to be able to push oh, in. No. Oh, no. <laughs> blocked as well. Mia's still there, but there's a point! They're trying to cap the point at the same time. They're dealing with that. Uber's pop. a couple kills. The Ubers get popped straight away. And it's heavy! Oh, he got the pyro finally. There was no one there to really Uber for, for, cat, for uh, Spike. Does get a couple, though. Does not get Mia, who is a cloaked spy, who is who is basically used all their time up. Cannot get anything. Cold gets a couple. At the same time, this is just a bit of this is a bit crazy right now. ETF 2 just cannot get anything going, and UGC finally understanding how to play with this 130 ping. It's they're finally getting yourself in game. Maybe we could call this a comeback. I'm not so sure.
I don't think it'll be a complete comeback, but we do, as I was saying before, UGC, they can't push out of this point. They're not having the advantages, they're not acting upon it. And ETF 12 know that they don't have to really compose themselves completely. They can just throw some corpses in there, just try to get some wacky and awesome kills. But do you see Mira actually getting found out by the Pyro using that Spice Skull? But the engineer does shoot her down. That's Johnny Bambo. And it does actually look like UGC are going to be looking to push out right now, but they're fight. losing so many people. Medic fight. Oh! <laughs> Heine and Sonny was going for a med fight, and Heine won the fight and was actually starting to taunt. And I'll tell you what, if the scout didn't actually hit him yeah, a second later, he would have had a taunt kill as well as the me melee kill <laughs> onto Sonny Flight. Unfortunately, with no medics, they are able to clean this up at ETF well, and they do take this. It's going to be 5 0, but what an entertaining fifth round that was. And. <laughs> Uh, they are going to be changing Turbo as well, so that's going to be also an advantage. That was really great play by them. Uh, apparently, five. Okay, I'm not even going to say what the score was there for the uh, Brother Epsilon game. It was five something. Of course, it could be five something. Anyway, <laughs> he's been Hayden. Bone's been on the camera. I'm Scully. We're going to take a break. When we come back, it will be the right server, the right teams, the right map. No cock ops like we did at the start of this game. Join us after this break and we're gonna go to the second map.